What's going on, everybody? You're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And in today's show, our live show, we're going to break down Giants training camp as it is just a couple of days away. The rookies reported yesterday, so we're getting rolling in training camp. The vets will report in a week, so we'll break down that. And I have five New York football Giants that I think have the most to prove or the most to earn at Giants Training Camp. We'll break that all down. We also have two live Q&As where I'll be answering your guys' questions. You can use hashtag Giants in the comment section right now to queue up your questions for my producer, Matthew Peterson. But you got to use hashtag Giants. No spaces, none of that. It's got to be connected just like Dr. Pancake or Christopher King in the comment section right now. King Wolf, what's up, bro? But the Giants, they had some news to deliver to Giants fans today. They told everybody they're going to be wearing some throwback jerseys this year two times. Not once, but twice. They'll wear these jerseys that they wore in the 1980s and the 1990s versus the Chicago Bears and the Washington Commanders. It still says uh, feels weird to call them the Commanders, but I love the uniforms. I think they're slick. It brings back a little bit of of pride and old Giants pride and brings a little bit of old school collabed with a little bit of new school. Saquon, Daniel Jones, it's going to look really cool. I wish the jerseys and the helmets kind of were a little bit more matching. I think the, the helmets are a little bit too dark. All in all, I love it because yesterday as the Panthers released their new uniforms and other teams started to release their new uniforms, I was like, the Giants, are they going to do anything? Probably not because they stand on tradition. And here they are bringing back the uniforms. They're also going to be rolling with the red painted end zone when they rock these jerseys. I'm excited. The red end zone looks sick. These look sick. I mean, Kenny Galladay can't play bad wearing this uniform. You look good. You feel good. You play, you play good. And if you play good, they pay good. Thing is, no matter how good or bad Kenny Galladay plays, he's already paid. He already secured the bag of $72 million. Let me know, though, your thoughts on the jerseys. We just circled through them. I think they're fire. If I had to scale them from 1 to 10, I'd give him a nine. My producer is a hater. He hates the old Giants uniforms. If you want to plug up PD and let him know what you think of the new uniforms as I try to figure out what's going on with my tweet, I'd love that. So let him know. This is PD you're, you're hearing right now. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Giants blue uniforms. And I know it's probably an unpopular opinion by even unbiased fans, but I do like the throwbacks. Now, Looking in the comments, Jamie is pointing out that they look kind of like the Bills uniforms. A little bit. I could see that. I, I, I don't think that. you're far off with that. But my first thought is you're talking about Kenny Galladay. Are you faster in these uniforms? <laughs> you because gotta be. if you get new threads, you have to be faster. It's like white cleats. Exactly. You and look so faster and run faster. Right. I mean, white everyone cleats. knows that every like everyone's faster when you play the Superdome down in New Orleans. You got to be faster in these uniforms. Now, to follow up with that, will Daniel Jones trip and fall in these uniforms? Or will he actually finish off the run? I think we have to boo Petey in the chat right now. Everyone boo Petey for that funny Daniel Jones take. But I like the jerseys. Let me know what you think. Jamie, like we said, looks like the Bills. King Wolf, he says make the throwbacks permanent. I would be cool with these being the permanent home uniforms. Because the current ones have no red in them. The only red is the stripe on the helmet. And I think you got to bring a little bit more red back like this. On the sleeves, it's cool. The numbers are also outlined in red. I think those look cool. I'm excited. Because, look, the Giants, they're, I don't want to say they're a boring team, but they rarely do anything that's exciting off the field. And today they did. The fans were excited. I'm excited. You're excited. They're also going to be wearing still their white color rush uniforms this year. So the Giants, they're going to wear four uniforms this year. I don't know if that's ever happened in Giants history. And they're also going to be wearing those icy color rush uniforms on Monday night football against the Dallas Cowgirls. That is going to be a lot of fun. I'm a fan of the jersey. You guys let me know what you think. I also want to ask this question because someone asked me this question yesterday. Who do I think has a better season coming up this year? Is it Daniel Jones? Is it Saquon Barkley? Type 8 for Daniel. Type 26 for Saquon. And if you have a reason, you can let me know as well in the comment section right now. I, um, um how do you, how do you, uh, on, this is, this is brutal right now. I can't figure out this tweet. I scheduled it for, hold on, hold on. Let me know. Type 8, type 26. 
it, it just, it's, it's not, it's, it's fucked. It's what it is. It's fucked. Twitter fucked me today. That's what happened. I'm going to do this, though. I think I'm going to outsmart Twitter and Elon Musk right here. Give me a sec. Watch this. Watch me work, fellas. If you follow me on Twitter, you better go like this tweet or it's going to be a problem. But Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, who has a better season this year? They're both on the last year of their rookie contract. And if neither of them play well, they will not be back with the New York football giants. Jamie says 26. We're also getting some boo PDs in the chat. I love that. Tajay says 26. Michael says 26. Dr. Pancake says 8. Maxi Millen says 26. Dr. Pancake says due to health. Michael says Jones is toast. D21st Dub says 26. The Rainbow Cow, most underrated player. I like that. He says 26. And Malik says 26. What about this? Name your favorite giant not named Eli or Lawrence Taylor. Because I think if you polled 500 Giants fans, 450 of them are going to say either Eli Manning or Lawrence Taylor. So I want to know from you right now, who is your favorite all-time New York football giant? Not named LT, not named Eli Manning. If I had to say my favorite, that's a great question. Give me, oh, that's tough. I don't know if my favorite. King Wolf says Victor Cruz. I got love for Victor Cruz. I can salsa like my guy Victor. Let's ride. Strahan, you can't go wrong with Strahan. The Rainbow Cow says Odell. Can't go wrong with that. Malik says Strahan. We got a whole bunch of Strahans. I got Jamie says Shockey. Gary says Shockey. Even though Jeremy Shockey didn't play for that long for the New York Giants, he has a soft spot in my heart because my dog was named Shockey and Shockey's no longer with us, but he's one of the best, best dogs you'll ever meet. I wish you guys could have met him. He was a great doggy. But Corinne says Bradshaw, the Rainbow Cow, once again dropping JPP. Michael says Jason Seahorn. He's a legend, that's for sure. One of the last, last cornerbacks you'll see that looks like him, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I like Victor Cruz a lot. Might not be my favorite all time, but an underrated giant, Hakeem Nix. What he did in the playoffs when the Giants won the Super Bowl in 2011 is not talked about enough. It's one of the best runs in a playoffs stretch by a wide receiver. He was great. The Hail Mary versus the Green Bay Packers. He was great. I also love Mario Manningham. I think he's really cool. I like Corey Webster. I liked Antrell Roll a lot. I liked him. Antonio Pierce was a dog. I mean, dude, there's so many guys. I'm going to be a coward, and I'm not going to answer the question. I'm going to let you guys answer it. Just like Corinne says, it's so many, it's hard to choose. I'm right there with you. It's the point in the show where we ask you guys to shout out your city and where you're watching from. Let me know. I'll give shout outs to everybody that lets me know where they are tuning in from. We are live from the Chat Sports Studios in Dallas, Texas. We're in enemy territory. But today's a special day because there's three people in the studio right now recording with me. And two of them are fans of the New York football giants. And it won't be forever. Ryan, come up on screen real quick. I want everyone to give our guy, our chat sports intern, Ryan, a shout out right here. We're the only two Giants fans in the office. We got to stick together. He's wearing a terrible shirt. He's a young and he doesn't know any better, but he's a Giants fan. I'm a Giants fan. Give a shout out to Ryan and let me know where you're watching from. Jamie says Maryland. Rainbow Cows type in D-Town. Dr. Pancakes watching from Morgantown. King Wolf is always rocking from Bergen. Gary's in the Bronx. Robert, yes, he's also in enemy territory in Philadelphia. Michael's rocking out from East Rutherford. Jamie, that, that was a little quick. King Wolf, yay, Ryan. We got Rosario Guzzo. What up, man? He's watching from Louisiana, Louisiana, if you know. Oh, wow. Rainbow Cow says, I'm from Middletown, if you know where. No. Yes. No, good. <laughs> Let me know, though. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm excited for today's show. We got a fun one pack. Jamie says, yep, I do. Malik is watching from New Jersey. We got people tuned in from all over the world. That's what I love about chat sports. I'm waiting for Tutu to join the party because when he gets here, it's an absolute party. What about this, though? Do you hate the Dallas Cowboys? I want you to like the video because we got 28 people watching right now. 
and only four likes. And with four likes, YouTube's not going to push this video to any Giants fans. And if that's the point, if that's going to happen, I'm not really sure there's a point for us to do this. We want as many football fans of the New York Giants watching this video. So if you hate the Cowboys, like this video. If you hate the Eagles, like this video. And if you hate the Washington Commanders, like this video. Hit that like button. The more likes we get, YouTube's going to send this puppy to more people out there to watch, and that's what we want. Because when there's only 28 people watching, it's not, a, it's not a big of a party. Parties are better when they're in bulk. So let's ride. And if you don't like the video, I'm going to believe you're a fan of the Cowboys, Eagles, or Commanders. And if that's the case, you're not a real one. And only the real ones are going to like today's video. We're up to 12 likes. If you haven't yet, like the video. Michael says can't like the video three times. You cannot. But if you hate one of these teams, I'm down with you liking the video. We also got two mailbags coming up in today's show. I'll be answering your guys' questions live. <laughs> I got our Cowboy fan saying something, but I can't hear him because he's a loser. <laughs> two mailbags today. Use hashtag Giants or Super Chat. All Super Chats. Get up on screen. We'll do two shots as always. That's the rules. I don't make them. Every single Super Chat we get on today's show, we'll take two shots of the dreaded fireball because that's all we got in an office. I'm usually a tequila guy. Type T in the chat if you're rocking it, if you're a tequila boy. And there he is. There he is. Drum roll, please. 2-2 two -two is in the chat. Ryan, get the fireball. Let's roll. Let's party. When 2-2's two here, the party starts, and I always love the first Super Chat he sends because it always ends like it always does. Here he is, his Super Chat. You can Super Chat like 2-2 on today's show. You'll get up on screen like he will, name, picture, and I'll answer every single question you got. He says, massive salute, Big Marshy. Drop by to pay our proper respects and slap all the stinky she-goes out of the door. Forget about it. 2-2, <laughs> two -two, man. You, I think you need a spot in the real one ring of honor. That's something I'm going to start on Giants now once the season starts. Just like the Giants have the ring of honor where they retire jerseys, I'm going to start the real one ring of honor. And 2-2, two -two, you've earned your spot in that. So salute to you. We got the liquor coming in a second. 2-2, two -two, I still don't think you can get me drunk. That, that's, that's, that's where I am. I'm a real one. You're a real one. And the real ones don't get uh, – they don't fall asleep at the pool like Tyler Jones did our Baltimore Ravens host here. Last week we went to the pool as a squad and he didn't do much swimming. He did a lot of sleeping on the bench because I drunk him under the table. He's not really all that real. Here's one. I'm going to need another one. So just bring that, bring that bottle over here, Chinsky. Let's ride. 2-2. Two -two. This is for you. Woo! Maybe fireball. But that thing is damn cold. Let's ride. We got a Q&A coming up. Use hashtag Giants. We'll get to that other 2-2 Super Chat in a second. I got to do an important ad read here, so hold on. Woo! All righty. Two shots down the hatch. That easy. Yes, sir. Let me get my, let me get my notes. 2-2, two -two, I see your Super Chat. Stick around. If you have a question, 2-2, two -two, ask it in the comments. Hashtag Giants. I'd like to answer a question you got. Well, let's do it. Let's, uh... Let's get into a Giants rumors mailbag right now. Hashtag Giants. I see Rosario is asking a question. King Wolf is asking a question. Hashtag Giants. Let's roll or super chat to skip the line. What's going on, everybody? You're watching New York Giants now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and today's show is sponsored by Mint. Mobile, they're offering unlimited talk and text plans on cellular devices for as low as $15 per month. You might have heard of them before. They're owned by Ryan Reynolds, the famous actor, and you can get started today. Inflation is crazy. We're all trying to save a buck. You can do that with getting started with Mint Mobile. All you got to do is go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. I'll put the link to that in the comments and description of this video, and we'll tell you later on about them in today's show. But Christopher King, my guy, what up, bro? Who do you think our front seven will be come game one? That's a great question. Peter, we have a depth chart if you want to go to that. I think on the outside, the outside edge rushers, no doubt about it, are going to be the rookie, number five, Kayvon Thibodeau. I just love saying that dude's name. I think it's going to look 
somewhat like this. Kayvon Thibodeau, outside backer. Aziz Ojolari, outside backer. And then I think you'll have some sort of combination of these three guys in the middle of the defensive line. Leonard Williams, Justin Ellis, Dexter Lawrence. And then behind them, you'll have Blake Martinez and Tay Crowder. That's what we're rocking with. And I have, I have some high expectations for this front seven on the Giants. I think that area on the field, that part of the team, is the most talented. Blake Martinez, he's a great football player. He's got to bounce back from that ACL injury. Aziz Ojolari, eight sacks as a rookie. Leonard Williams, we know he's a beast. Sexy Dexter Lawrence, we know he's a good football player. And then K. Von Thibodeau. That's the most talented group on this roster, and I'm expecting them to carry the Giants going forward into the 2022 NFL season. That's who we're rocking with. I appreciate your question, Christopher. Next one coming in from Alan. What up, man? He's a real one. Should the Giants sign Linval Joseph? Okay, bringing back a former Giants legend. We need some depth on the interior defensive line. I don't know if we necessarily need more depth. We'll take a look at that in a second. But Linval Joseph is still a solid football player at this point in his NFL career. Last year, spent time with the L.A. Chargers, played 14 games, sat out a couple due to injury, but he had 57 tackles, three tackles for loss, one sack, and two QB hits. He was a lot better player with the Giants than he is at this point. He was great with the Minnesota Vikings for a while, but I understand why you might think we need to add some veteran interior defense alignment depth. Because after Justin Ellis at the nose tackle spot, of course, Dexter Lawrence could play there. I don't think he needs to or will. I would like him more to play alongside a guy like Leonard Williams. But if Justin Ellis can't prove in training camp or in the preseason that he's ready to be a day one starter, I'd all be in the camp for going out and signing a guy like Linval Joseph. He's a winner. He knows what it takes to play for the New York Giants. He's been there and done that. And I think it's always cool when you can bring back a guy to an organization towards the end of their career when they started off with the team like Lynn Val Joseph. So for that reason, if he's down to take a one-year veteran minimum deal, maybe sprinkled with some incentives to earn some more cash, I'd be down with it. I'd type my S in the comment section for sign. I don't really understand why you wouldn't want to sign him, but if you're in that boat, you can let me know. Sign, should the Giants sign Lynn Val Joseph, type S for sign, or you can go down and type P for pass. The Rainbow Cow, that's a sweet picture right there. Player that is on a prove it, contract on both sides of the ball. I'll go straight to um, Sterling Shepard and Blake Martinez, two players that took pay cuts this offseason to remain with the New York Giants. They're on the last year of their deal due to that pay, that pay cut, and if they don't play well coming off of serious injuries and Achilles in the sense of Sterling Shepard and an ACL in the, sen in the sense of Blake Martinez, both of those guys will most likely not be back with the New York Giants. So they need to prove it, that they can still play in the NFL at a high clip after two serious injuries. I love Sterling Shepard. He started on fire last year, tore up the Denver Broncos, but then he got hurt. I want Blake Martinez to stay healthy because he's a good football player, but that's who I'm rocking with, Shep and my guy Blake Martinez. We told you guys about Mint Mobile to start today's show, but let's break it down a little bit more in depth. They offer unlimited talk and text high-speed data, a mobile hotspot, and plans starting at just $15 per month. Inflation is crazy, but they're going to help you save money while also making it very easy on you. You get to keep the same phone. You get to keep the same phone number. You don't got to go in-store to change wireless providers. They have digital eSIM cards that make it easy on you to make it work. And they have the largest 5G network that you will be on. And they have plans that start at just $15 per month. I'm trying to save money. Inflation is crazy. I spend way too much money at the gas tank, and I'm making up for, by that by switching over to Mint Mobile. And you can get started today by going to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. We'll have the link to that in the comments and description of today's video. Pop Johnson, what a sick name. What up, bro? Both KT stat projections for 2022. G-Men, let's ride. I love this question. Kayvon Thibodeau. <laughs> Broncos country. Let's ride. If you know, you know Russell Westbrook, the cheesiest player in the NFL. Or Russell Westbrook, uh, Wilson, excuse me, talking too much NBA. Both of them. One of them is just way past his prime. But let's get back. Kayvon Thibodeau. I'm expecting at least eight sacks in his rookie year because that's what his counterpart did in Aziz Ojolari last year. Kayvon Thibodeau is a better player coming into the NFL 
than Aziz Ojolari is. Aziz has a year under his belt, put on some big boy, grown boy weight in the offseason, working out in the facility. So I'm expecting eight sacks for Kayvon Thibodeau. I just want him to play 17 games because we know he's had some injuries at Oregon in the past. So eight sacks for Thibodeau. But when it comes to Kadarius Toney, I want seven all-purpose touchdowns, whether that's running, whether that's receiving. Maybe he throws one this year. Seven touchdowns. He didn't score one last year. So let's – I don't want to go over the top and say he cements himself as a number one wide receiver. While I do think he has that potential and skill set, I think down the line he can be. But seven touchdowns for Tony and eight sacks for Thibodeau, I think those are all realistic benchmarks, which I would like to see them surpass this year. Great question, Pop. Really do this, 55, what a name. Do you think a Jimmy G trade is possible? Been seeing a lot of people talk about it, yes. First, David Carr talked about it. Then Mike Tannenbaum talked about it. And now Colin Cowherd is leading his show today by speaking about Jimmy Garoppolo to the New York football giants. Colin Cowherd said he believes, and people he's talked to, the giants are the leading horse in the Jimmy Garoppolo trade sweepstakes. And as much as I love Daniel Jones, I've always believed this when building an NFL team. If you can upgrade at the quarterback position, you do so. And as much as it pains me to say this, Jimmy Garoppolo is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones. So if the Giants go out and make a move, I'll support it because I bleed blue. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. Let's go back and look what happened at the beginning of the offseason. The Giants were trying to sign Mitchell Trubisky, an NFL free agency, to compete with Daniel Jones as QB1. That doesn't mean, or that means that they are not fully sold on a guy like Daniel Jones. If they were thinking about replacing him with Mitchell Trubisky, they would be dumb to not at least and talk about or think about the idea of Jimmy Garoppolo. Do I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a top 10 QB? No, he's probably top 15. He's better than Daniel Jones. He's been to the Super Bowl, been to the conference championship twice. He's an overthrow away to Emmanuel Sanders from winning a Super Bowl. Do I think it happens? No. Would I be surprised? No. But it's something I think we should definitely talk about and not just shoo away as fake news. Because if we learned anything this offseason in the NFL, anything is possible. Just go look at Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Tom Brady, and everything else that happened in one of the craziest offseasons of the NFL. But we'll ask this question. Should the Giants trade for Jimmy G? Try to leave your bias for Daniel Jones out of it. Because when you're making decisions like this, it's got to be with this and not this. But let me know. Should the Giants trade for Jimmy G? Type Jimmy G for yes or type F Jimmy for no. Dr. Pancake, what up, man? Do you think our defensive front can cover up our weak secondary? That's what we're going to be leaning on. We are going to be leaning on the ability to create pressure because our secondary, like you know, is young and inexperienced. I love Xavier McKinney. I love Adoree Jackson. I like the rookie Dane Belton. I like Julian Love. I think Aaron Robinson has a long career ahead of him by playing in the slot. But after that, I'm not really sold on what we have in the defensive backfield. Is Rodarius Williams ready to be ready? Is Maurice Kennedy ready to play a lot of snaps? I think those, these are all questions that the only way they can be answered is by what we see on the field from them coming up in training camp, preseason, and the early part of the season. But this team, its heartbeat is going to come from that defensive line. Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau, Aziz Ojolari, those guys, they need to carry this team because that's the – that's the part of the team that has had the most invested, and it has the most talent. And that's what wins in the NFL, talent. And that's where the Giants have it, on the interior uh, defensive line, as well as the edge rushing spots. Week one is just around the corner. I think I saw a tweet yesterday that we are 54 days away from getting to week one. And I want to get to 11,000 subscribers by then. Is it lofty? Yes, but I'm challenging you. Yes, you. Big Blue Nation Giants fans, if you love the Giants and you're looking for free daily videos on the latest Giants news and rumors, we are your one-stop shop. Tap in, hit that big red button, because when the NFL season comes along, our content is going to be lit, and it's going to pick up like never before. So lock us in, hit that big red button, youtube.com slash TV. Robert, what's up, man? Giants now by Chat Sports. Can the Giants split the two games against the Cowboys? G-men usually play up to divisional foes, even if they are less talented. It's true. Robert, you're right. I think, I don't 
don't think it's outlandish to think that they could split with the Dallas Cowboys. The fact that they play them in two primetime games, one on Thanksgiving and one on Monday Night Football, I believe they can steal that game, one of those games. How sweet would it be on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day if the New York football Giants go into Jerry World and beat the Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day? I just can't wait until Fox Sports pans their camera up to Jerry Jones in the press box, and he's pissed off because Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley just lit up the Dallas Cowboys defense. Do I think it happens? I think there's a chance. I believe you can split any time with any team in your division. Nobody knows your divisional foes like you do. The Giants, like you said, play up to their divisional opponents. And I think Dable is smart enough to scheme up at least one win against the, New York, or against the Dallas Cowboys. Great question, Robert. Great question. Last question on today's mailbag, Senior Slam. What a name. What are your expectations for get Kenny Galladay this year? I had really high expectations coming into last year for Galladay after he was signed to that mega deal four years, what was it, $72 million by Kenny Galladay. And he didn't really live up to the bill of being a true wide receiver one. Didn't score a touchdown. Just 37 grabs for 521 yards and 14 games played. The stat that I think is telling, though, is the yards per catch. 15 in 28, uh, 2018, 18 in 2019, 17 in 2020, but just 14 in 2021. Shout out to Jason Garrett for that. That's what needs to change. He needs to get back to being a downfield threat, not just some slant boy like he was with the New York Giants last year. And he has no option but to be great this season because the Giants receiving core, as much talent as it has, it's young and it's inexperienced and it's injury prone. Galladay has those problems. Who knows if Sterling Shepard's going to be ready this year. And you have Tony and Wandale Robinson. After that, a lot of question marks. Kenny Galladay needs to earn his keep this season. He needs to show me, you, and everybody that's a fan of the New York football Giants that he was worth every single dollar of that deal that he got back in the 2021 offseason. I think he's going to have a big year. I really do. I think with Dable and Kafka and this new offensive game plan of being more spread out in space and throwing the ball more, Galladay's going to have a chance to have a good season. I just pray they throw him the ball more in the red zone this year than they did last year. He's six foot five, six foot six. When he's covered, he's still open. Give him a chance. He's one of the best contested catchers in the NFL. But we'll end the mailbag with this question. Seven touchdowns for Kenny Galladay this season. Over or under? How are you feeling? Last year he scored zero. He has been the, leading lead, uh, the league leader in touchdown receptions before, but seven touchdowns in 2022 for Kenny Galladay. Let me know what you're thinking. Type O for over or U for under. He better have more than seven freaking touchdowns. That's what I'm saying. We got some soups to get to. All right. Remember, all Super Chats get on screen. And every single super chat equals two shots of the dreaded fireball. Pour me up. Bartender, hit me. We got 2-2 two -two coming. Massive shout out to our Italian Passino in the live chat. Mr. Rosario Guzzo, the king of NY Giants Nation fans legends. Rosario Guzzo is a real one. He's been a, he's been a Giants Now subscriber for a while. Here's one shot. <laughs> My guy Ryan is... Filling these to the brim. Wow. 2-2, two, two, we got one more coming up for you. Uh, uh, just, just give me the damn bottle, you damn intern. He may root for the Giants, but he's a kid still, and he doesn't know how to party. I'll get him right, though. I'll get him right. 2-2, two, two, we got one more coming your way. Here we go. 2-2, two, two, let's ride. And <laughs> Wow. Devon is in the chat. Let's roll. I love my big blue how are you doing, my friend? I don't like fake New York Giants fans. Well, I'm not a faker. I'm a real one. You're a real one. I know you're a real one because you've been around since day one. But I'm doing good, man. Um, it's a fun time of the year for me. I'm getting to talk Giants. I'm getting to talk Knicks. I'm excited. Training camp's just around the corner. There's a lot of interesting things coming around for the Giants. Look, it's a contract year for Daniel Jones. It's a contract year for Saquon Barkley. We've got a new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. It's going to be a new look team, and sometimes the unknown is really interesting. Devon, I appreciate you. You're a real one. Back to the question of seven touchdowns for Kenny Galladay this season. We got over from Devon. That fireball creeps up on you. Yeah, it does. It'll be in a couple hours when I'm expected to do more work, but 
doing work when you're when you're a little schloss is fun. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if I owe another one or not, but we'll just take one more. So I, 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 I'm a man of my word. I'm a man of my word. Let's ride. Whew. All right, we're about to go through a segment. With Giants training camp just around the corner and the rookies reporting yesterday, I wanted to look at five guys with the most to prove at training camp. And I kind of thought of this segment as guys that <clears throat> are fighting for a roster spot and guys that have the opportunity to prove to Joe Shane, Brian Dable, Martindale, and Kafka that they deserve a starting spot. I think it's going to be a fun segment for everybody. I'm excited to do it. We also got a sweet deal for you guys coming up about these new Giants uniforms. I know everyone's pumped about that. So let's do it. Let's talk about it right now. Training camp is just around the corner for the New York football Giants. So on today's show, I wanted to take a look at five Giants with the most to prove. Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And with that said, we're going to take a look at five guys. But first, I want to get you guys involved Early in the show, before I share the five players that I think have the most to prove or the most to gain in training camp, I want to ask you, give me one name. What singular player has the most to prove at training camp coming up in a week? Is it someone that's on offense? Is it someone that's on defense? Is it a head coach? Is it John Mara? Is it the medium Pepsis that were sold at the stadium? Let me know what you think. The most or the player with the most to prove at training camp. The number one guy that came to my mind was Gary Brightwell, the fifth round selection back in 20, the 2021 draft by Dave Gettleman. Didn't play a lot in his rookie year, but now with the Giants having somewhat of a crowded running back room led by Saquon Barkley and Matt Breida being the number two running back, Brightwell, Jay Sean Corbin, and Antonio Williams are all fighting for that third running back spot. I do think the Giants will keep four running backs, but when you're the fourth running back, some games you're not going to dress out. You're going to be asked to, to produce in the special teams department. That's what Brightwell did last year. But the third running back will still get touches and still be involved in the offensive game plan. I think it's important to note that Gary Brightwell last year, in his rookie season, played in just 12 offensive snaps. He was not used as a running back. He was used as a special teams guy. He was on kickoff, kick return, punt, and punt return. That's where he got most of his burn in his rookie season. And so he didn't really set much of a foundation for himself as a running back. And this year, if he wants to make the roster, he's going to have to show whether it's in training camp or preseason, he could be counted on as a back that you can hand the ball off to. And if he doesn't, he could be looking on the outside end of this 53-man roster. I think training camp will be a great starting spot for Brightwell to show the rest of the team and Giants fans, honestly, what he can do at the running back position. But I want to ask this question before we get to candidate number two. Who will be the Giants' third running back come week one of the 2022 NFL season? Will it be the undrafted rookie in Jay Sean Corbin? Type JC. If you're rocking with Gary Brightwell, you can type GB. Or if you think Antonio Williams is that guy, you can go down the comment section and type AW. The New York football giants are wearing their throwback jerseys this year two times. It's going to be exciting. They announced it on Wednesday this week, and we've got them on sale for you guys. You can get a Daniel Jones, a Saquon Barkley, a Kadarius Tony, but this is the one I would get. Xavier McKenney. I like getting the guys that not everyone gets. You got to have two guys on your team, right, Petey? that you can wear a jersey of. And Xavier McKinney is that guy. I think he has a, bound, a, a breakout year. I think he's going to be contending to be an all-pro player. But get hooked up with one of these fresh jerseys. They're already selling like hotcakes. They're not going to last forever. Go to chatsports.com slash Giants throwback. That's chatsports.com slash Giants throwback. You're going to be wearing, want to be wearing these new threads. They've also got Kayvon Thibodeau, a whole bunch of them, as well as throwback players like Lawrence Taylor, O.C. Eumannior, Jeremy Shockey, all the Giants legends have these jerseys on sale. Chatsports.com slash Giants throwback. You just got to go to that link. All of it in the comments and description of this video. The guy I think that has the second most to prove or earn or gain at training camp is Darius Slayton. And we've talked about Slayton 
a lot on this show. He's been mentioned in trade rumors. He's been mentioned as a cut candidate. And the thing I think that is most telling about a guy like him and is he's been running with the second team and Giants OTAs and Giants minicamp this offseason, running behind guys like David Sills, Richie James, and C.J. Board. And that's a problem. You're Darius Slating, Slayton, entering year four of your NFL career, and you're fighting for a roster spot, that usually doesn't end up that good for you. The Giants are going to keep these four receivers for sure that you see pictured in Galladay, Shepard, Tony, and Robinson. I think they keep two more. And it's going to come down to Slayton, Board, and Richie James. And I think Board is going to make this team because what he does on special teams. If we could ever get back to that rookie year Darius Slayton, where he came into the league and surprised everybody as a fifth-round fifth selection out of Auburn, 48 grabs for 740 yards in eight touchdowns as a rookie. He had everyone believing he was going to be the great or the next great New York Giants receiver, but it didn't happen. In 2020, he had a solid season, but in 2021, that's where he just kind of fell apart. He lost the confidence. He started to drop the, fo the football a lot more. The last two seasons, he has 12 drops. Do I think he makes this roster? I say no. And it's partially due to the unfortunate situation that he played so much and played so well on his rookie deal. He got an up pay in his salary. He went from $900,000 to $2.5 million. And as we know, the Giants have been battling the salary cap all offseason long. So I think they cut him. They save that $2.5 million, and they use it to be more flexible or roll it over into next season. What do you think? Will Slayton make the Giants 53-man roster? Type M for make, or you can go down and type C for cut. When the Giants start to cut players or sign more players, we will be keeping you guys up to date. Subscribe to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports for videos every single day on the latest Giants news and rumors. We just crossed over 10,000 subscribers. Salute to everybody that's hit that big red button. But we're trying to get to 11,000 by week one, which is about 50 days away. Is it lofty? Yes, but I know Giants fans answer the bell every single time. So I'm challenging you to ha get more people to subscribe to Giants now. Send it to a friend. Send it to a homie. YouTube.com slash chat sports. Uh, you, you, uh, you, YouTube.com slash NYGiantsTV. Wow, that was brutal. Let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Seals Jones, he's the next guy I have on my list that has the most to prove at training camp. And it's it's because he's a guy that's been bouncing around the NFL for a while. He hasn't really found a sticking point on any team in the NFL. I think that's a depth three. I don't know what's going on there, PD. But Daniel Bellinger, the rookie that was drafted this past year, has turned a lot of heads at Giants offseason programs, we'll call it. And he, in my opinion, is the number one tight end on this roster. I have it on the, on the screen as tight end 1A, 1B, and that's what I think it will eventually play out as. But Ricky Seals-Jones has been a guy that hasn't been getting a lot of reps in offseason programs. Brian Dable calls it a rep chart and not a depth chart, and he's a guy that hasn't been getting a lot of reps. Daniel Bellinger has been the tight end in the number one huddle all offseason long. And for a guy like Ricky Seals-Jones that's been in the league for four years and he's already on his fourth team, and he looks like he already has lost the starting spot to a number, to a rookie, that's a problem. I like Ricky Seals-Jones, five-star recruit coming out of Sealy, Texas, played at Texas A&M. He was a guy that came there as a wide receiver, switched to tight end, has all the potential in the world, six foot six and split out wide, has some wide receiver skills. And I think that fits this off offense a little bit more. I think he's more of a receiving threat than a guy like Daniel Bellinger, but it comes down to who do the Giants want to rock with? And I think they want to rock with the rookie and Daniel Bellinger, who's made a lot of good plays and has a lot of fans inside this organization. I think Bellinger gets the nod. I think both these guys actually make the team. I think Seals Jones will be tight end number two. But I want to ask you this question. Who do you think will be the starting tight end come week one? Type RS for Ricky Seals Jones or DB for Daniel Bellinger. Another guy. Let's go with a rookie. What about Dane Belton, the fourth round safety drafted out of Iowa. I think he has a lot to prove at training camp. The Giants are thin at safety. They don't really have a whole lot of bodies there. After Xavier McKinney and Julian Love, I think Belton can, can, can be that guy that steps up into that third safety spot. Jaron Williams was switched over from a corner 
to a safety spot because the Giants were so thin there. They also have undrafted free agent Yusuf Corker, who's going to be competing for a roster spot. But I really do believe that Dane Belton is very good, and he's going to challenge Julian Love for playing time this upcoming season. He's someone that I think is more of a true strong safety than a guy like Julian Love. I like Julian Love best as a nickel guy, as a slot corner guy. And I'm expecting Wink Martindale, like he said he would do, to maximize his personnel and use more three safety sets with Dane Belton at the strong safety, Xavier McKinney at the free safety, and Julian Love at that nickel spot. A lot of three safety sets like we, like we used to see in the Giants' heyday when Steve Spagnola had us go into the Super Bowl. That's what we did to get there. We started that three safety movement. And I'm expecting that to be the same this year because the Giants don't really have a strong nickel corner. I want to see a guy um, like Darnay Holmes take another step this season or Cordell Flott as a rookie take a step. But Julian Love has proved it. He can man the slot, and I think that's where he'll play predominantly this season, while Dane Belton is going to sneak up and surprise a lot of people and become the starting strong safety by season's end. Last guy on today's show that we'll take a look at that has the most to prove at training camp, and that's the rookie, Joshua Azudu. He was a top 100 pick by the New York football giants, and when you select someone in the top 100, you're expecting them to play right away. Right now, I have him as the backup left guard to a guy like Shane Lemieux. But can he go out and beat him out? Lemieux's coming back from that Patel injury that he suffered last season. But can the rookie, Joshua Azudu, show the new offensive line coach, the dirtbag mentality, and earn that starting spot? I think best case scenario, Azudu becomes that starter. Because the earlier your rookies play, they're going to earn more confidence. They're going to earn uh, playing time and just the trust within that locker room. And when you, like we said, take someone in the top 100, you're expecting them to play right away. And that's what the Giants need. They need Azudu to come in, earn his keep in training camp, preseason rolls around, show he's better than Shane Lemieux, and earn that left guard spot so the Giants could have a complete offensive line that they can move forward for. You could have Evan Neal, Azudu, Andrew Thomas, and Mark Lewinsky as your four offensive linemen starting for the next four or five years, that would be a very solid group that you can build around and build on top of. I would love to see a Zudu start. He's going to have to turn some heads and earn it. I still do predict Shane Lemieux the guy that will start, but a Zudu will have a fighting chance to be that guy. But I want to test you right now. Predict it. Who will be the starting left guard for the Giants come week one? Will it be Shane Lemieux, type 66, type 72 for Max Garcia, or if you're rolling with the Rook, you can go down in the comment section and type 75. I would love to see a Zudu start. I got a lot of 75s coming in the comment section right now. Brian Oliver says 75. The Kid says 75. Rainbow Cow says 75. King Wolf says 75. Rosario Guzzo says 75. Look, you draft these guys early in the NFL draft, you want them to play. The fans want them to play. And it's not because Shane Lemieux is not a good football player. I think he is. He's coming back from a nasty injury. But when you can get the younger guy out there playing and getting those reps under his belt and proving that confidence and proving that skill and that technique, I want to see Fred Green just randomly saying Mark Bavaro in the comment section. That's cool, Dad. Uh, I don't know what context that is. I guess you're late to the show. Maybe I uh, – are you answering the question where I uh, – he's not going to see this if he's behind because <sighs> – Technology Fred, that's what we call him. My dad is the guy that will send me a text that says, check this email. I sent you a link to an article. Why not just text me the link to the article? I don't know. Classic Fred. Type in Mark Bavaro 35 minutes into the show. But yeah, I hope it's Josh Azudu. Frank says 66. Pop Johnson says 75. Brian Oliver says put Fred on the offensive line. Fred would get tore up on the offensive line. He's a long-distance runner. He's, he doesn't have that mean nastiness to play on the interior offensive line. We got 75 from Riley. Michael saying 75. Look, I think we all want Azudu to start. He's a rookie. We want those guys to start. We got another mailbag coming up to close out today's show. King Wolf says I think Max Garcia will get cut. I'm right there with you. I think, I think he's on the chopping block. One more mailbag. Use hashtag Giants or Super Chat. Or Super Chat. Uh, we got some questions coming in. Not enough. If we don't get enough questions, 
We're not going to do another mailbag. How about that? But if you got one, use hashtag Giants Trey if you're still watching. Ask a question for me. I want I want to see how you're feeling about the New York Football Giants. Or you can super chat like my guy uh, Tutu and Devon did earlier. Every super chat equals two shots on the show. Follow suit like King Wolf did, where he asks a question that we'll get on the show for sure. Appreciate you, King Wolf. You're a real one. I think you're earning your way into the real one ring of honor as well. But let's roll. We got a mailbag coming up right now. So, Petey, I am ready. Today's Giants mailbag is sponsored by Mint Mobile. You can get started with an unlimited talk and an unlimited text plan for as low as $15 per month. All you got to do is go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. You might have heard of them before. They're owned by Ryan Reynolds, the famous actor. We'll tell you more about Mint coming up later in the show. We'll put the link to that also in the comments and description of today's show. Mintmobile.com slash chat sports. King Wolf, my guy, what will we do at slot receiver since Shepard will be injured? I think Shepard's going to be ready to go by week one, and I want to see him in the slot. But let's say he's not ready by week one or another injury comes up for Sterling Shepard. I think the Giants will be fine at the slot receiver. Kadarius Toney can play there. Wandale Robinson could play there. I actually want to see Kenny Galladay play a little bit in the slot. Get that big slot there where he can run the seam routes and dominate the middle of the field. And I think we will see that this year. We've seen a lot of teams move their best and biggest receiver into the slot. We've seen it with Michael Thomas. We've seen Jamar Chase, Odell Beckham, Cooper Cup just won the triple crown coming out of the slot. That's the easiest throw for the QB. It's the shortest. He's, he's open most of the time. You're going up against linebackers, slot corners, and safeties. So at the slot, I think we're fine even if Shepard's hurt. I would like to see a double slot where we have Wandale Robinson on this side and Kadarius Toney on this side. That's a lot of speed that defensive coordinators are going to have to game plan for. Great question, though, King Wolf. Do it, Nike. Why have the Giants not signed Jimmy Smith? Maybe because he's washed at this point. I was the leader at one point of the Jimmy Smith to the New York Giants fan club. I thought it made a whole lot of sense. He's played under Wink Martindale for pretty much his whole entire career over with the Baltimore Ravens. He's an older guy now, but I thought he could come in and be kind of that big brother to a lot of young corners on this team. He's just not really that same corner that he was at one point in his NFL career. Played in 10 games last year, had some injuries, hasn't played more than 13 games in the past four seasons. Didn't even play that well last year. When targeted, he gave up a completion percentage of 69. Nice. Didn't have an interception this year, didn't have one last year, and had only one in 2019. I never really wanted to bring Jimmy Smith over to be a starting player, a player that played a lot. But I thought he could be a big brother and a coach on the field in a secondary that's young with a lot of youth and could help them understand this new scheme that's much different than what the Giants ran last year with Patrick Graham. I think Wink Martindale runs a very nice scheme. He's aggressive. He likes to blitz. And I thought Jimmy Smith could come over and teach a lot of the young guys about that. I'm still not closing the window of Jimmy Smith coming to sign, but I think every day that goes by, the chances continue to get lower. But I'll ask you, do you think the Giants should sign Jimmy Smith? Do they need another veteran corner? I think they do. I just don't know if it's Jimmy Smith at this point. But I'll ask you, type S for sign, or you can go down and type P for pass. This would be a veteran minimum deal for sure one year. He's old, probably over the hill, but sometimes it's okay to have a vet in the room. Let me know what you think. Should the Giants sign Jimmy Smith? Jeremy Chuggs, who could be the X factor on this Giants defense? X factor, X-man, Xavier frickin' McKinney. I think X-Man is going to have one of these seasons where a lot of, like, before this season, a lot of people probably didn't know of Xavier McKinney. But after you played the Giants, there's going to be fans of other teams be talking to their friends like, yo, have you heard of this Xavier McKinney guy before? He's a freaking baller. And he is. And I think he's going to be asked to do more in this Wink Martindale system. He's going to be asked to be that center field safety. He's going to ask to play that strong safety. Come down and play a little safety in the box on the diamond nickel sets. Be an outside blitzer on the line of scrimmage. I think he fits this defense perfectly. It kind of goes back to what he did at Bama where he was used all over the field. Last year, he was one of the only player, uh, the only player in the NFL with 90 tackles, 10 pass breakups, and five interceptions. With all the great safeties in the league, 
He's the only one that did that. Go back and watch that game against the Las Vegas Raiders last year, and it'll show you how good of a damn football player Xavier McKinney is this year. He's the X factor. If he takes another step, this Giants defense could be for real. We told you about our sponsor today, Mint Mobile, at the top of the show. But now let's break it down and tell you why, why you should switch over. They offer unlimited talk and text, high-speed data, a mobile hotspot, and plans starting at just $15 per month. And my favorite part of it is it's very easy to switch over. You get to keep your same cell phone. You get to keep your same number. You don't got to go to the store and deal with the people that you don't want to talk to. You can change over from the comfort of your living room with digital SIM cards. It'll only take about 15 minutes to switch over, and it's only going to cost you plans starting as low as $15 per month, and you get unlimited talk, unlimited talk and text. Look, inflation sucks. I'm spending way too much money at the gas pump, the grocery store. It was like $8 for a loaf of bread, and I'm making that up by switching to Mint Mobile. Get started today, mintmobile.com slash chat sports. You might have heard of them before. They're owned by Ryan Reynolds, a famous actor. Do like me. Save yourself some money. Be smart with your wallet. Switch today, mintmobile.com slash chat sports. Riley 4S Jr. Okay. What do you think of Adoree Jackson? I love Adoree Jackson. Started a little bit slow for the Giants last year. Kind of was the butt of a lot of jokes because he got beat early on. He got scored on against the Denver Broncos. Ricky Seals-Jones mossed him when we played against the Washington football team in the corner in the end zone. But the last 9, 10, 11 games of the season, according to Pro Football Focus, Adoree Jackson was a top five corner in the NFL. I am a little bit concerned, though, about his injury proneness if that's a word he seems to always be bruised and nicked up a little bit but he's gonna have to play all 17 games this season he's now gonna have to go back to being a cornerback one on a team last year he had big bro James Bradbury as the CB one he could depend on but now he's got to be that guy is he ready to match up against one wide receiver ones all year long that's a tough and tall task to do but the amount of money we paid him he better freaking do it because that's what we pay you to do and he got paid to do it. I love Adoree. I want to see him take another step this season. I think he has all the skills in the world to be a lockdown corner in the NFL. Can I get a G, man? Do you think Wandale Robinson plays a lot this year? What's a lot? Do I think he becomes a starter week one, week two, week three? No. But as we know, injuries always happen in the National Football League. And let's say an injury happens to a guy like Galladay or Shepard or Tony, Wandale Robinson is going to be asked to go up and play a lot of football. And he has the potential to be a very big, dynamic playmaker for the New York football giants. Do not be surprised if you see Wandale Robinson, Kadarius Tony, Sterling Shepard, Galladay, and Saquon Barkley all on the field at the same time. But with Saquon split out wide and Wandale Robinson, in the backfield. We've heard some of that being done at Giants offseason workouts this summer. He played a little bit of running back at Nebraska before he transferred to Kentucky. He has all the skill sets to be elite, and I think he fits the mold of what the Giants want to do at wide receiver. They want guys that are generators with the football in his hands, and that's what he is. He can get active after the catch. He's a yak machine. I think he's going to be great, but how many touchdowns do you think Wandale Robinson will score this season? Let me know in the comment section. I'll say five, five TDs for the Rook this season, but let me know what you think. Talik, what up, bro? What do you think the odds are of the Giants being this year's Bengals? <sighs> Not very high. Um, Keyshawn Johnson actually said he had, he named five teams that could be this year's Bengals, and the Giants were on that list. And I'd love for the Giants to make it to the Super Bowl this year. But I, I, I just, it, uh, it pains me to say it. I don't think so. I love this team. I love this organization. I bleed Giants blue. But to leak the odds, 5% chance. And that might be a little bit too high. But I appreciate your question. I appreciate your fandom. And I appreciate you subscribing. And if you get like to leak, subscribe to New York Giants now. Because we just crossed over 10,000 subscribers. But we're trying to get to 11,000 by week one. We are 54 days away from week one 
of the National Football League, and I know we can get there. If you love the Giants and you're looking for a one-stop shop on YouTube that does nothing but cover everything under the sun related to the New York Football Giants, we're your channel. Hit us up, youtube.com slash nygiantstv. Pop, three draft prospects you want the Giants to get next year. Also, over, under, seven games won. I'm going to go with over. I think the Giants win eight games this year. I think they can go eight and nine this year. They'll be right around seven. And I think that's why Vegas has it there. Vegas knows Vegas is right, and they make it tough. But three draft prospects, I'm going to lean on a quarterback because as much as I want to see Daniel Jones be the guy, I'm not sure if he's ready to do that. Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, and I like Van Dyke, the quarterback from Miami. I almost said Will Levis, but the fact that he puts mayonnaise in his coffee and eats bananas with the peels on, I can't trust him. He shouldn't be allowed close to a school at all. That is criminal activity. First off, mayonnaise sucks. And if you're going to put it in coffee, you're a freaking weirdo. But Pop, I want the Giants to draft a quarterback after this year. Give me Stroud. Suck for Stroud. Blow for Bryce and be weird for Tyler Van Dyke. Pushing P, YSL, hopefully you're not in prison. What do you think surprises, or who do you think surprises the most this year? Great question. What about Dane Belton? I don't think a lot of people are talking about Belton as a guy that could play a lot coming up on Sundays, but you really only have two safeties on this team that have played a lot, and that's Xavier McKinney and Julian Love, and you really need a strong safety. I like Julian Love. I like his coverage skills more than him as a thumper and a run stopper, but Dane Belton is a do-it-all safety that can mix it up and get nasty inside the box. He's big, strong, and athletic. He fits the prototype of a Don Wink Martindale strong safety. I expect him by week four, week five, to be playing a lot of football this team. He is my guy this year that I think is a surprise player that plays above expectations. But I want to end today's mailbag by asking you that question. Who is your surprise player this year that plays above expectations? I'm rolling with Dane Belton, partially due to the fact the Giants are thin at safety, but also because I think he's a damn good football player. He's violent, he's physical, he's athletic. He came from Iowa. If you come from Iowa, you're a badass. But let me know, who is your surprise player that plays above expectations this year for the Giants? I'm rolling with Dane Belton. I really am. I think he's going to have a good year. Rosaria says Barkley will surprise. He will have a big bounce back year. I hope so. Talik has a question. At the middle of the season, which unit do you think will be playing better, offense or defense? I think defense. I think there's just more talent on this defensive side of the football. Aziz Ojolari, Kayvon Thibodeau, Leonard Williams, Adore Jackson, Blake Martinez, Xavier McKinney. There's just a lot more players. My mom is saying Dane Belton, and she has no idea who he is. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for agreeing with me. I knew someone would agree with me. And if it's you, Mom, thank you. King Wolf, Team Van Dyke, Levis needs to use creamer. Yeah, what a freaking fraud, man. If you use mayonnaise in your coffee, delete me out of your life. Mike Francis says Cordell Flott. I would love to see Flott come up and step up as the number one slot corner that we can roll with for the next couple of years. Do I think he can be that guy? Yes, but he's got to prove it to me first. I think he, he still has a lot to learn. Looked a little bit raw in camp. We're going to end today's show with this, though. Our Knicks channel here at Chat Sports, we've been growing like crazy. Chinsky, fire that link in the chat. I'm going to put the subscribe link to our Knicks channel in the chat right now. If you love the Knicks and you love the styles of show we do here at New York Giants now, you're going to love what we do at New York Knicks now. I also host that channel. Knicks fan, Giants fan, get to do what I love. That's a shout out to you guys. We just crossed over 10,000 subs over there as well. But we're trying to get to 11K. We're covering the latest Donovan Mitchell rumors, talking Brunson videos every day over there as well. If you love the Giants and you love the Knicks and you, you love me, subscribe. I'm kind of begging at this point. There's 52 people here watching right now, so a lot of people won't see this. But if you love the Knicks, for real, for real, Go to youtube.com slash TV, or you can click the link in the comments right now.